Dan with S3 Archery here, and this is going to be the third part of the mini series that we're shooting on crafting wood arrows. And the particular concept that I'm going to be covering in this video is going to be cresting. Um, this is one that I'm really excited about and kind of the thing that got me um, into customizing my gear and into the DIY stuff. And I think it's a great starting point for any of you archers out there that haven't tried it before or maybe haven't done any DIY stuff. There is a little bit of particular items that you need to pick up and there's ways to do it cheaper. There's ways you can just buy them ready to go. Um, in this particular tutorial that I'm doing, I've got a boning professional cruster and then I have a little quarter inch brush here and then just a little detail brush. And then I've got the True North arrow paints. These are the paints that I prefer, although there's all kinds of different options out there for you. These are water-based and they're designed specifically for cresting and it gives you really nice color. Um, Durability is pretty good and with that lack of fumes you can do it in the middle of winter with the house locked down. You can do it after the kids are in bed, watching TV, whatever you're doing um, and there's no real irritation for people. It also um, doesn't bother you just personally doing the cresting itself. Before this I had used the Fletch, Fletch Lac kind of paints and those have a really, really nice strong finish to them. They look extremely professional, but you need to thin them and they have an extremely large amount of order that comes out. Um, a couple years ago when Joe and I were in Kalamazoo, we actually did some cresting in the hotel room we were in. And after about six arrows, I couldn't do any more, I had to stop. Um, and so, although it dries very quickly and it gives you a good finish, you have to have a really decent setup in order to be able to pull that off. And because of that um, negative takeaway, I've gone away from them entirely to the True North products. Um, and so, like I said, this um, I'm very happy with what I get out of it and I can do it and um, stay focused and that's huge for me. Uh -huh. So those are the products that I have that I'm going to be using in here. You can use anything from modeling paints, um, some people use markers, there's, if you search the internet there's all kinds of different things. Um, but these are the products that I've used and I've been very happy with. So as far as now getting the shafts ready for the cresting itself, I've already got a particular pattern that I like. And so I've got that on here and I set it with the knock. As discussed in the previous video, um, I like to put the knocks on after the first couple coats of the sealer are done. That gives you a really good kind of base to work from. And so when I put my pattern on here, I actually have to move it forward a little bit because I've got a couple of different markings on here and I like kind of where they line up with the fletchings, which would be the next video that we'll shoot for you here. If you decide to crest without a knock, that's perfectly okay. You just have to adjust your pattern depending on what you want your final product to be. So this, you know, video series is focusing on wood arrows, but as I discussed, you know, all these products, the cresting machine, I mean, that can be used for anything. I actually started cresting with carbon arrows. And then when I switched to the aluminum legacies, which I was very happy with, um, I crested those up and I've used the, um, the True North for all three different types. There are some prep products that you can use to kind of make this stick a little bit better. Um, but what I found is that I crest just on the shafts if they're aluminum or carbon after I clean them with some alcohol. And then with these wood ones, I just make sure that there's no dust or debris after those first two coats of lacquer. Crest it and then regardless of which type of shaft I was using, I will dip it in one more coat of gasket lacquer just to seal it in. I found that that gives a lot of durability to the True North products and it is compatible, but you have to be careful because as you're dipping it, if it rubs on the side, it will smear the paint because it's not quite dried until it comes out of that tube after that 30 seconds or so. And so I'm gonna get things teed up here. We'll get this on the cresting machine. I will crest the first one. It's probably gonna be noisy and so I'll try to talk through it, but we might have to um, mute that out for you guys because it might be too annoying. So let's get started. All right, so I've got my pattern laid out. I've got the shaft on the cresting machine. And so now I'm gonna put a white base coat on every spot that I'm gonna end up with paint. As far as consistency goes, it's important that before you start your cresting, you mix up your paint. Like I said, I was gonna use the True North Arrow paint here. And so this is the water-based paint. And so if it's too thick, I just add a little water and then mix it up. If you're using the Fletch Lac, then you got to put in one of the thinners and mix it up as well. you got to make sure you do that before you start any of your projects because even though you seal up your paints, 
um, there is a little evaporation and sometimes you'll come back and it'll be a completely different consistency. I run my paints just a little bit thicker than a lot of people, but I find that it gives me good coverage. And so I'm going to start this up and we'll get this thing going. All right, so now using my thicker brush, I'm just going to start by putting my lines on here. And I'm really not trying to get it perfect off the bat. I want to just mark my places and then I'll come back with my thinner brush and fill them in. And I'm not sure if this video is going to catch it as well as I can see it here, but I can tell that there's a little bit of wobble still on this wood shaft. And that's why it's important that as you go along you keep these arrows as straight as you can. And if you're just starting cresting, it's a good idea to do a carbon or an aluminum because then you don't have to compete with the straightness of your arrow potentially screwing you up. Alright, so now I've got all my initial spots. I'm going to quick clear this brush and move on to my thinner brush. And this is the one that's actually going to do the job that you want to have done. And so I'm going to start by filling it in. And I always want to go from one side of the bar or the stripe all the way to the other. And what you'll find is that that'll tighten that up and make it look really, really nice. And I find that the thin, smaller brushes give me the best lines. And it also takes any of the wobble out just by taking your time, light pressure. And then after I have my base coat done, then I'm going to let it dry based on whatever product you're using. And then come back and throw a color over the top of that. After my colors dry, then I'm going to end up coming back and doing the final step, which is using a gold metallic to catch all the edges. And that really, I think, um, gives it that final look, which makes it look professional. And it's something you can be proud of. The other nice thing about using something like that to catch your edges is that it's going to take away any of the wobble that you see right now. It seems to cover that up pretty nicely. And so I'm just working from one side, light pressure, all the way to the other side. And that gives me the best kind of consistent line. Just like so. And of course, if you have a steady hand, it definitely makes it look a lot nicer in a pattern that isn't too intricate. And I always like to throw a little bit of gold here on the back. And so I'm going to catch that with my white base coat all the way from the base of the knock up that taper. And I'm just going to spin that and make sure that I've got all my lines where I want it. Now I'm going to switch shafts and we're going to go to the red. Alright, so now I've got the dry shaft and ideally if you're doing a bunch of arrows I would do, you know, your full dozen, do all the whites, wait the half hour, hour, whatever you need to, come back and then do all your reds and continue to do it. In this example this one's been drying for a while and so I'm going to put my red stripe on here In my colors, I leave about as thick as the white, and sometimes you'll have to come back and hit a second coat if your color doesn't quite cover the way you want it to. Now, if I wanted to hit all of those other lines, I would do exactly the same, but I'm going to stop here. We're going to let this dry, and then I'm going to switch to my gold, and that's really what makes it pop. All right, so now we're ready to put on our gold, and this is the most critical part here for me. I want to take my time, I want to hit my edges, and what you're going to notice is just how defined that makes everything. And 
And ideally for me, if it's close to the edge of the table, I get the best reach. Right now I'm slightly outside of my reach just so I can get that camera in there for you guys. If you have a thinner paint, it'll let you get thinner lines. And just be gentle. You don't need a lot of pressure, but you need consistent pressure. I'm going to flip this up so you can maybe see a little better. And on this particular cedar shaft, since it's the 2364, you get a lot of, a lot of paint down there. So I'm touching the transition between any colors. So the red to the white, the white to the cedar. And I hope you can see in the video, but you can take a little bit of that kind of wobble look out of it too by being gentle. And then once I'm done with this, I let it dry a good half a day to a day. And then I'm going to throw that lacquer sealer just one more coat to lock everything in before it gets on the fletching jig. Wick down, mark my line. And then the part that really sets it apart Catch right in front of that knock. And there you have it. Your final crusted piece. Alright guys, so that concludes my cresting video here, taking normal shafts and making them look like this here. As I said in the beginning of this video, I think that cresting is one of those things that's just absolutely wonderful to kind of start your um, DIY experience with shafts that you pick up. You don't have to do the whole first two parts of crafting the wood arrows that we discussed, but just going from these here to these, to me does it. And so that's the end of this video here. In the next video, we're going to go into um, fletching. And so we're going to show just a little bit of how to use um, a fletching jig, what glues we use, dry time, a um, little bit of tips and tricks, I guess you would say. And so that'll be a nice little short video coming to you here end of the week, hopefully, or next week. So stay tuned for that. And as always, put comments if you like. Um, like I said, the videos that we've been doing so far is with our experience, the products we use, the way we do it but there's a lot of different variation out there as far as products and techniques. So stay tuned for more.